So today I'm gonna install the ceiling fan in my garage. In my old garage, I had a super short ceiling, so all I did is have this kind of box unit fan with an extension cord. It was really ghetto, but it worked. So I decided in this garage, I actually want a fan, an actual ceiling fan. So what I'm gonna do is show the electrical setup for the ceiling fan and how that works. And then later on in the video, I'm going to get a little bit more involved in some different ways to actually wire up some ceiling fans. But if you're here just to see how to wire up a ceiling fan, I'm gonna get this thing wired up real quick and get the thing installed. And then if you wanna stay after later, you'll be able to see some different ways to wire things up if you have some questions on an existing ceiling fan in your home. So I know I go over this every single time that I do an electrical video, but I'm gonna go over it one more time. So when you have a circuit, all a circuit is, is a closed loop of electrons that flow around the wire. So within this loop, we have the breaker or our panel box and our breaker. And then the power runs over to a switch. Or if we have an outlet, the power run over to the outlet. And then let's say this is a switch. It'll run over to some device like a light and it'll power the light and then the electrons will flow back to the panel box. So let's play make believe real fast. This light is gonna be my light and ceiling fan combo. So in this circuit, your power is gonna go from your breaker over to your light switch. When you flip the light switch on, it's gonna provide power to your controller up in the light, up in the ceiling fan box. And then depending on how you use the remote and where you want the power to go, regarding the light or the fan, it's gonna send that power to the light or the fan. And then the power that goes through the light and the ceiling fan is gonna go back to the panel box. I didn't make the remote part of the circuit because it's suddenly not part of the circuit. It's only sending a signal to tell the controller what to do. And also I was a little bit frustrated because I was looking for a ceiling fan combo that didn't have a controller, one that could just be controlled with switches, and I couldn't find one. And a lot of the ones that I've installed recently also have the controllers. I don't know if they're just getting away from the old way of having a double switch. One, light, one switch controls the lights, one switch controls the fan. Um, but these are nice because obviously they'll control your lights and then different speeds of your fan as well. And the circuit I set up in my shop is gonna be a little bit different as I'm not gonna have a switch. I'm gonna have the breaker. It's gonna be hardwired up to the controller. Then I'll use the remote to control the controller, which will send the power onto the fan or the light. So this controller looks intimidating at best, but let's start with maybe what we know. The ceiling fans will be wired with the 14 gauge wire, the white Romex. We have a black wire, a white wire, and a copper wire, and the copper wire is the ground. But when you're dealing with ceiling fans and lights and things like that, a lot of times I'll use the green wire as your ground. And so you just start with what you know. Well, obviously, somehow these match up, right? You have a black wire, white wire, and a ground wire. And so that'll eliminate part of this mystery. So you'll know that this needs to be hooked up to the box. You'll also see that there's labels on these other wires, and they wouldn't really hook up to anything anyway. And so these will be used later on to hook up the ceiling fan to light. And then if you look at this goofy little wire, this is actually your little antenna. So of course the breaker is gonna be in a panel box. Your switch, which also be a 15 amp switch because the 14 gauge wire is rated for 15 amps. So you'll have your 15 amp switch in a box. And then you'll have a box for your ceiling fan. One thing I wanna mention, the ceiling fans need to have a special box. There's actually different types of ceiling fan boxes out there. Don't just take a light down and then decide that you're gonna put a ceiling fan in there because it's not rated for that. And sometime maybe when your mother-in-law or somebody's over, that's when that thing's gonna fall down and she's still gonna think that you're an idiot. So hooking, a, hooking this up in your house, it should look something like this already or if you're setting up a new system. Breaker, 14 gauge two wire over to your switch and then 14 gauge two wire over to your ceiling fan box. And my system is gonna basically look like this. From the panel box, it's gonna have the Romex wire going straight over to the ceiling fan box. So in my case, I have my 15 amp breaker already in my sub panel. The breaker's off. 
And that white 14.2 Romex is running from my sub panel up to this ceiling fan box. And this is a ceiling fan rated box. So obviously you want to make sure the power is off. I have the breaker flip to the off position. So I'm going to go up to the box, make sure there's no power in the box. I'll just be using this non-contact voltage tester. Then I'm going to pull the wire down to strip the wire. And you'll see that there's the extra copper wire in there and that is connected to that ceiling fan box. So at this point you're at the mercy of the manufacturer and all these ceiling fans are a little bit different. And I've noticed, noticed that on a lot of jobs as well where I'll install faucets and different things and I don't know if they're just trying to keep their engineers employed. But there's always different like little different like little changes every now and then. So definitely make sure you read the instructions. So depending on what your setup is like, you might notice that things may not work out safely. And what I mean by that, stay off of here, is right now I have two studs up in the ceiling fan box and they gave me these lock washers to screw onto those studs. So obviously the, the lock nut is gonna fall right through that opening where it's gonna mount onto the box. They gave me some washers that are supposed to go to these screws. And of course, this isn't gonna work either because these two screws are too small for the box. So when little things like this come up, it's always a good idea to make sure you have some spare parts around. So I'm gonna go get some bigger washers to make this work. And I'm not gonna throw away any of these little parts that I didn't use because you never know when you'll be able to use them for another project. So next I'm going to wire in the controller and if you keep in mind I have one black wire, one white wire, but then I have two ground wires. The little orange wire nuts that they gave me aren't going to work for the ground wires since I have two. So keep in mind, make sure that you're using the right wire nut for the amount of wires that you have and for the size of wire. So I'm going to be using a yellow wire to wire not all the grounds together. So this is the setup I have at this point. Pretty straightforward, all you're doing is just wiring the wires from the panel box up to the wires and the controller. Next I'm going to plug in all the connectors where they need to go and then I'm going to tuck that controller up above the motor. Not sure how much of a difference it makes and I know you can't really see it right now but I do have that antenna sticking down just above the motor. You probably have a switch. Mine's just direct wired since I'm gonna be controlling it off from the remote. And there it is, just in time because I'm about dying of heat exhaustion in here. So most of the ceiling fans you're going to see nowadays have that controller to where you're just going to wire your wire straight into the controller, use a switch to flip it on, or like I did, use a breaker. 
But here in the next section, what I'm gonna do is actually show some of the other type of ceiling fans, just in case you have an older one, or in case you bought one that didn't have the controller. And I'll show you how to wire it up with one switch or with two switches to where you use one switch for a light and one switch for the fan. For this next section, I wanna describe a little bit more in detail about what this Romex wire does. This Romex wire is a 14 gauge wire and it's called a two wire because there's two conductors. Technically there's the ground, but the two conductors are what carry the electricity. The ground is, here is a safety to take any current that makes it outside of this, the circuit with these two wires back to ground so it doesn't shock anybody. The advantage of Romex is that you essentially have the wire for your circuit and one big wire, let's just call it. So looking at the beginning circuit, let's think about this circuit in terms of this Romex wire. So you have your breaker, you have your black wire, which is going to be hot all the time, which means it's going to have current in it all the time. So let's take this black wire and let's start up to our device. So the black wire goes over to, of course there's a switch here. Let's make this an outlet instead. So this is gonna be our outlet. So the black wire goes up to the outlet and then our neutral wire is only going to be hot when something is plugged in. And this isn't, the white wire is not gonna make it back to the breaker, but it's just gonna make it back to the panel box. So with this Romex, you can see with the, white, with the two conductors, how it has made a complete circuit. This ground wire is here. Actually, it's, this ground wire is gonna be here. So in case any of this electricity gets outside the circuit, we'll take it right back to the panel box safely. So now let's look at this in terms of the ceiling fan circuit. So keep in mind that this is, pretend this is the ceiling fan blades. This is the ceiling fan light. We have a breaker and we have a switch. So let's use the Romex wire to set up a circuit so if you have your panel box, you're going to have your place for your breakers. And then you're going to have bus bars down the sides. And your bus bars are where your neutrals and grounds connect. The black wire is going to connect up to the breaker. So let's put the pieces together. You have a black wire that comes from the breaker over to your switch. Then you have another black wire that goes from your switch up to your device. In this case, we're powering a light and ceiling fan. And then you have the white wire, your neutral wire, running from the device back over to the bus bar. Of course, I don't have the ground wire in here, but what I want you to understand is a complete circuit has now been made. Starts at the, panel, the circuit starts at the panel box and makes its way around to the switch to the device and then back to the panel box. So regarding the ceiling fan without a controller, you should have four wires coming out of the ceiling fan. So what you'll have is the black wire, which is the hot wire. You're going to have the green wire, which is the ground wire. I'm going to use a pencil since white on white doesn't look too, doesn't show up too well. So now this will be our white. And then you're going to have a blue wire. So you already know what the ground is for, you know what the neutral's for. The black wire is one hot and the blue wire is another hot. And so let's separate our fan and light and this is what we have. The neutral and the ground are gonna serve the entire device. But your blue wire is going to control the fan and your black wire is going to control the light. But let's redraw the circuit like this. We know we have a ground wire coming out of the light ceiling fan combo, and we know we have a neutral wire coming out of the light ceiling fan combo. So we have our ground wire that connects from the wire on the ceiling fan light combo to the bus bar on the panel box. 
and we also have our neutral wire that connects up in the same place if I would have made the wire long enough. But even though the ceiling fan and the light are the same combo, we're gonna draw it like this. The black wire is gonna serve the light. Blue wire is going to serve the ceiling fan. If you don't care if the light and the ceiling fan are always on together, then what you can do is you can connect your switch to the breaker in your panel box, and then you can connect the, both the blue and the black wire up to the wire up in the box that's going up to the ceiling fan box and wire nut all these together. So what that means is once the power is on at the breaker, you flip on the switch, it sends power to both the light and the ceiling fan. And then where your circuit gets complete is the neutral wire that goes back to the panel box. So this may seem a little bit odd how you're gonna have one wire, it's gonna split off into two wires and then go back into one wire. But remember, you only have so much power coming from the breaker. And so even though you're gonna power two devices and come back to one wire, you still really only started with one wire. One wire split into two wires, the current now splits is going to power both devices and then go back into the one wire. We're gonna introduce the Romex which is the 14 gauge wire, because it has a 14 gauge, the white jacket. And it's gonna be a 14-3, which means there's three conductors. Black conductor, red conductor, white conductor, and then the ground. We're gonna use two switches. One switch is gonna control the light. One switch is going to control the ceiling fan. So this is how this is gonna look. These switches are obviously in a box. And if you're doing any type of wiring, I'm, I'm sure you're pretty familiar with this. I don't want to be condescending, but I hope that you at least have a pretty good command of what's going on here. I don't really want to draw the box around the switches because I don't want it to get too busy. But these switches are in a box. What we're going to do is run a hot wire, the black wire, over to the box. Then we're going to do what's called pigtailing. And that's where we're going to connect wires up to two wires up to another wire. And we're going to wire nut all these together. So at this point, you have power coming up to the bottom screw on your switches. So let's move this blue wire out of the way a little bit. We'll move the black wire out of the way a little bit. So now, the reason that we need the three conductors is we have our black conductor coming up to provide power to the box. We have the white conductor that is coming back to the panel box from the device. And then we're going to need a black wire that's going to be wire nutted up to the light. And where the red conductor comes in is right here. This is going to connect up to your other switch and get wire nutted up to the blue wire. So now what I can do is I want to sit here and watch TV without the light on. Turn the light off. Right now the circuit is broken to the light because the switch is off but I still have power going up to this switch. Switch is on, which means this circuit is still live. So the light's off, but the fan's running. But it's a dead of winter. I don't want the fan on, but I want to obviously see where I'm going. So now what I'll do is I will flip on the light switch that powers the light. I don't want the fan on. Now what I have is the black wire powering these two switches, except for the circuits broke here. The switch is off. But now the power is running through this switch over to the light and then through the neutral wire and back to the panel box. So I've completed this circuit. So I hope you're still awake from that super long explanation, but this wiring isn't too, too hard once you kind of understand how the circuitry works. And that's really what I want to accomplish in this video is just making sure that you understand where the electricity is going through the wires, through the devices and how the whole thing works. And also remember, electricity is dangerous, so make sure you're taking all the proper precautions. And if you do have questions regarding electricity, make sure to reach out to somebody who knows something about it. We're so grateful for everyone who has supported our channel, and thanks for watching.